What a great privilege and a great honor that he grants unto us as a nation that he gives us the breath of life. And then understanding the power of the Ru'ak, he asks and grant us the ability like no other nation to offer up the tifirat, the praises of exaltation, the great honor that's due unto them, to him. And so what a great privilege it is. And Yah grants us again on this Shabbaton to come before him and to offer up our ablations, that which is acceptable by Yah, and the offerings of great praises unto him it is a great privilege it is an excellent privilege that he grants that unto us as a nation and i will not take that for granted we greet you all our friends you that have joined us via the live broadcasts our enemies we hope forgive me yeah but we intrigue you that you may be intrigued to even detest and to despise me even the more. That's all right. I have no problem with that. They hate it. Sonhe, they despise your shun. Its words did not resonate. Find a home in their hearts, in their minds. And things have not changed from that hour to this hour. We don't hide the Torah of Yah in our bosom that we will not sin against Him. We hide folly and foolishness. We can draw on things that happened 25 years ago, 10 years ago, 3 years ago, 2 months ago. We can't draw upon the messages that were taught unto us that will make us strong that we may prevail against the workings of darkness. And we tend to get elated and excited about those things that have no relevance. Unto the walk of Yah, there is no relativity. It doesn't add strength. They don't nurture us. And they certainly do not make us happy and strong. They tend to debilitate, to cause us to be weak, inebriated. But we don't have the ability to war against the forces of hell. So we greet you all again. I want to directly go into this teaching today. It is one that takes an immense resource of commitment, will, desire, and passion. You don't discover these kinds of things by being placated. Read a verse and that settle all things and satisfy you. I can't do it that way. It takes a volume of time and energy and resources. And there is only one resource, the Torah. And I want to begin this teaching a three-part on Babel, Babylon, Babel. The mystery. We must understand the mystery of Babel. There is such a diversity of that teaching. And everyone that you listen to, they complex it even the more. You may have heard it from greater orators. I have no problem with that. Men that are of greater acume and specifics in the knowledge but you will not hear it in any greater fashion of simplicity that will open up doors of understanding like you have never heard as you will hear today we must understand the dynamics of Torah and there's a word in our vernacular in the language it is called intransigent intransigent and in the Aramaic language, you would enunciate that hazak, hazak, which implies that uh, it is obstinate. 
It is so inflexible that it will not even bend or be shadowed for anyone. It is very adamant. It stands on its own creeds and its own credentials. And nothing alters it. Nothing changes it. It is as solidified today as it was in the bosom of our Abba in Hashemai. Nothing changes. Nothing alters it. Nothing prevails against it. It is tenacious. Its tenacity never change. It is the Hazak of Almighty Yah. I want to establish one principle today before I began as to where my resources of this teaching, how they were generated. They were not generated by reading books that men have written and 99.9% .9 of them are Christian men. I don't read their books. I have no fancy for their material. I don't read it. I simply do not read it. And so in order for me to establish the parameter that I will teach from, I must draw from a resource that is Chazak. It is stout. It changed not. It is inflexible. It cannot change. And there's only one book that I know that doesn't change. There are revisitists. They revive. This book cannot be revived. It has been said. It has been written. It is established. And nothing alters that at all. And in order for us to understand the dynamics of this, I must read one khatuf from a wise man, from a man of great wisdom in Torah. You must understand that they did not just have copies of Torah lying around anywhere. And so one like Shirak, when he could venture into the arena of the intellectual properties of the university there in Yerushalayim. He had listened so attentively to those that were given command of Torah. And their oratorical skills were so precise that the heart was convinced. Didn't have to read it. Did not have to see it. It was the power of the Ru'ach HaKhodash that convinced the hearts and they retained that knowledge they heard it and it was settled in their bosom and it began to produce the peri the fruit and results in their lives so as this great educator Shirak, wise teacher of torah when he would hear the orators speak with great emphasis and great beauty the words, the Dabarim of Torah, the promises, were so sound that one's heart and mind engaged into the depth of it. And so he spoke one khatu, one verse, to signify the Hazak of Torah. And it's found, my friends, in the writings of Sharach. Chapter 33 and verse 3. He speaks of a ben Adom. He says, a ben Adom, a man of understanding, and he referenced that to the word Tabun, a man that has insights. He's wise, he has the da'ats, he has the hukma, the wisdom. The great understanding of the great power of Torah. So when you find one that is a man or a ben Adam of understanding, you know that there is one profound attribute of that man. He says that one trusts. 
That one bought that. The one has great confidence. The one has great assurance. That's man. For a man does not trust in Torah, he has no understanding. He has no bina. He has no bin. He has no taboon. He has no insight into the depths of Yah's wisdom. He must trust Torah. He must trust Bodach. He must have great confidence. He must engage where a man trusts the Torah. He engages himself in Torah. It refines him. It sharpens him. That he become Chazak, stout and strong. He doesn't alter anything and the Torah is defined in a way that is not difficult for his nation to understand. We must have men been at home of that nature that they first of all trust in the Torah. It says for that man, for him, for him the Torah is as dependable it is as dependable as an oracle, a one that speaks, or that one that dispense and minister the depths of Torah. He said, when you read that, when you understand what the Torah says, when your eyes perceive the writings in the book and the words that you have heard by the oracle, the one that speaks, the one that utters, reveals unto us the great dynamics of Yah's Torah that it nurtures us. We can depend on it. When we are weak, we can depend on it. When we fall, we can depend on it to raise us up in the presence of Almighty Yah. And until the Torah becomes more dependable, then our own fleshly nature, we will never trust Yah. So when the oracle or when the messenger speaks, his words have no impact. Because we will not read the Torah and see how dependable the words that he speaks. And he is a man of understanding, so he has depended upon the Torah that he may utter the revelation of Yah's great wisdom, the mind of Yahshua unto us. And that's why you have such diversity taught on Babel, Babylon, Babel, the mysteries. You cannot understand the concept of Babel unless you understand the dynamics of words. You will not understand the very spirit of Babel, Babylon, unless you can begin at the Rishith in the beginning. And I want to begin there and open up our understanding that we may know and that we will have no doubt at all. I want us to understand the preference of words I use, the mysteries. I want to, first of all, define what Yah declares a mystery and show you that in context in Scripture. I want to show you that. So I want to begin with one of the most pronounced and pronounced expressions of the mystery, it is the amuk. Those things that are so deep, they're beyond the concept of man's understanding. When Yah places an amuk, it is deep. It is that which is unsearchable. And the only way you're going to find out that takes a certain pedigree of a man to find out. And to give us understanding of this word amuk, I want to be gone here in the book of Eob, Job, chapter 11. 
Iyob speaks of the great dynamics of Yah's power, his magnificent beauty. There was one by the name of Zophar, he replied unto Iyob. And these are his words. He asked this man in Eob 11.7, he said, Can you by searching find out Almighty Yahweh? Can we by our own intuitiveness, by our own intellectual proudness, can we find Yah? Can we by our independent experiences with Yah, can we truly find him? So the question was proposed to Eob. He said, can you find out the most powerful to perfection? Can you find out the very dynamics and the great power of Yah by searching? Then he says this in verse 8. He says, it is as high as the Shemayim. We're searching out the depths of Yah to understand the great amuk, the unsearchable things of Yah. They must be revealed. He says, not only is as high as the heavens, uh, he said, uh, what can you do? It's that high. How do you find uh, the very height and the depths of Yah? He said, it is beyond the heights of Hashemayah. And not only that, uh, he said, it is deeper. I'm not talking about the Sheol, what we see as a grave. that goes down 6, 10, 12 feet. He said, it is deeper than hell. What can you know? What can you hear? What can you experience? It is a mook. The mysteries of hell and the depths of it. It is beyond the comprehension of man. So you will find those that will say, well, I went down into hell. I saw hell. This is a total, vile fabrication. It is a shekha. It is a lie from the depths of some of the most insidious workings of darkness. He asked a man that was tomim, perfect, complete in the knowledge of Yah. His avat was a wise man. He was a student of Torah. And these men that sat in company with Eob, they were friends of his avat. And they saw the great nurturing of this young man. And they saw the hand of Yah upon this one we call Eob. And in the midst of all of the great perplexities in your life, can you search out? Can you find the depths of the great mysteries of Yah? Do you understand the amuk, the great wisdom, and the great depths of his understanding? The as high as the heavens, and to the lowest depths of hell, Sheol. That's the greatness of the depths and the mysterious power of Yah. We're talking about Bobel, the mystery. He also, Torah, it uses the words amik. We all could learn how to be meek, couldn't we? The words amik is, it is so profound, it is so esoteric, it is occultic. It is beyond the ability for the natural mind to conceptualize, to conceive it, because there is no material that you can measure the amik or the deep things of Yah against what? By your intellectual proudness? By the writing of books? By the reading of books? It doesn't come that way, Yisra'ya. It is greater than that. And to give us a concept in our minds what amik is, who could express that any greater than Daniel Yah? And he speaks it. To our reference, Daniel chapter 2, verse 22. The profound mysteries of Yah, beyond our ability to understand. He says, Almighty Yah, He reveals. He gila, He opens up. He makes known. He reveals the amech, the deep and the setah. Or the secret things, the things that are hidden. 
He knows what is in the darkness, and the light, the Torah, dwells with him. It is only Yah that, that reveals, that opens up the very deep things, the, the amik, the things that are profound. We must understand the mysteries of Babel. We must understand the mysteries of Babel. We must understand the mysteries of Babylon. And it's not what you're hearing from the pseudo unintelligent men today. They think highly of themselves and they think that they're intelligent, but they're not spiritually intelligent. They don't have that spiritual depth. And so Daniel here gives us a concept of this great amik of Yah that only Yah can give. He is the one that reveals. He is the one that opens up because he understands the very depths of the hoshech of darkness. He understands the very nature of darkness. He understands the working of the forces of power in darkness. He understands that only Yah can reveal the darkness. Only Yah can shine light upon darkness. Only Almighty Yahweh can because we can see through the scientific efforts there are places they call them dark holes and no light can penetrate. Only Torah can penetrate the darkness of concepts. What about the mind? What about the light doesn't shine? Only Yah reveals the light. Only Yah can shine the light into the depths of the whole Shekha where the darkness can be felt. Only Yah can do that. Only Yah can shine the light into the depths of the darkness of our hearts and the mysteries of sin that were perfected in us. Only Yah, only the light, you're sure, could shine to the depths of the nature of hell in us. Only Yah, sure. We must understand, Bobel, the concept and why. We must. You're not going to learn it from YouTube, I tell you that. And these men that profess that they are scholars and their scholarship is very limited. They read everybody's books. And they are pseudos and speak what they've read in a book. I speak what is read in the, written in the Sefer, Torah, and the witness of the Nabi'im, the prophets, and the power of that revelation in Yeshua, Hamashiach. There is one specific expression of the mysteries that, that I want to open that up unto us in great depths. And it will be probably the one that I will refer to as I teach. It is called Batsa. Matsa. These mysteries are beyond the ability to search out. Can anyone tells, tell me the depths or the heights of the heavens? Man with all of his scientific, with all of his scientific knowledge of things, he can measure the depths of the seas. He thinks he can. But no one can tell us the heights of the heavens and the depths of hell. Only Yah knows that. Nobody can reveal unto us that the distance of stars. Ask the question one day, how far can we see? Man says we can see at least 25 miles out because when you see where the ocean ebbs with the horizon, that's 25 miles. Well, I thought well, I can see at least 93 million miles because I can look up and see the sun. I can see that far because that's what man says. It's 93 million what light years away. So I can't see the sun. I don't know that distance. 186,000, whatever it is, 186,000 miles per second. So I know I can see that far. What a great power he has given unto us, uh, the eye and the eyes of perception. I want, to, I want you to understand this word, but some, those things that are unsearchable. You can spend all of your life and you will not be able to assess. They are inaccessible. They are beyond the, the concept of man's ability to search out the riches. They must come by the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. 
And there's a certain mindset in the Ben Adom that reveals this unto us, uh, and it's in the book. I want to give us somewhat uh, of a, an assessment of this word, Matzah. It says in Bereshit, in Genesis, Hallelujah. It is important that you understand this because we are going to teach on Nimrods, Nimrat, Nimrods, to understand the dimension of his mind, to understand the definitive of his name. We don't even know that. Those that are listening don't know that. They're wise in their own conceit. I want you to hear this in Genesis Bereshit's Chapter 11, verse 6. And Yahweh says, Behold, uh, he is talking about the kingdom uh, of Babel. He said the kingdom or the people, the people they are one. They all have the same language, the same theft, the same tongue. He said, and this they began to fashion. And to do, uh, and now nothing will be restrained. Uh, he used the word batsa, nothing. Lo, there is nothing of that spiritual dimension that the mind rises up against Yah to exalt one's own doctrine and theses of darkness. Uh, that rise above the Torah of Yah, he says nothing. He uses the word batsa. He says nothing will be made inaccessible to them. For the mysteries of darkness. And for the depths of hell has been opened unto them. There was a reason why. For the corruption of their mind, their language. Now it speaks out of the depths of Sheol, of hell, the darkness. And these are the words of Yah. He says nothing will be inaccessible unto them. Nothing they will not ascertain. Nothing that they will not be able to draw from and to draw upon. Because this thing that is in their hearts, they are going to perform it. Hear the reading now. He says, nothing shall be but saw from them, uh, what? Which they have imagined to do. Hallelujah. They have perceived it in their minds, nothing. Lo, there is no chance that anything will be restrained from them. There is nothing that is accessible uh, to the depths of the mysteries of darkness. That they will not be able to grasp, to understand. Because those angels, they were Melachim that fell. They were able to assess a certain knowledge of mysteries. But not all. But not all the mysteries. And that's why they came down and they produced uh, a certain form of life with womankind. But they were not accessible to all the mysteries of Yah. They were not accessible or they could not access all the mysteries of Yah. That is reserved just for a few Yisrael. It's not reserved for every man, every individual. We will proceed to understand that Yisrael. Hallelujah. To understand that, we want to read from the book of Hanak, Enoch. He speaks of a time, Enoch, whereby what shall prevail, it is irreversible. Uh, nothing is going to change it. He speaks of that dispensation uh, that shall befall the rulers of the earth, the landlords, uh, and all those that have used uh, their own depraved imagination to rob uh, with the subtleties uh, of the depths of darkness, uh, to rob the nations. His people. And who could give us an assessment of that accounts? Like Hanach. Not Shaul. Not Moshe. Not Dayaya, but Hanach. He's the only one that could do that. And he speaks to us. 
in this time. Hanak, chapter 63, verse 1. He talks about these days. In those days, he talks about the governors. He talks about the kings, the Melachim, who possess the land, who owns the land. We own no land in this country. You own no land in the land they call Israel. It is all owned by the government and the rulers and the landlords. You die and see where the land goes back to. They shall plead that Almighty Yahweh may give them a little breathing spell from the kings or the Melachim of his own, of his own punishment, of his depravity, his corruption. Nothing that they have imagined shall be held back from them. The batsa, the mysteries, nothing shall be withheld back from them. He says to whom they have delivered so that they shall fall. They're going to fall down. And they're going to shaha worship before Yahweh of Savah. And they're going to confess their sins unto him. He says they shall bless the magnificent almighty Yah of hosts and say bless is almighty Yahweh of hosts. He is almighty Yah the king. He is the great ruler of all men, of all nations. He is the master of the riches. He is the Yah of splendid, and he is the Abba of great wisdom. And look what they say here in verse 3. Hanak 63.3. It says, your power. It is the Koach of Yah. We have seen the power revealed unto us. And the depth of a word that is so alive, it lives. Because the power of Torah lives in us, then we can face the circumstances of an uncertainty of tomorrow. The reply unto Yah, your power exposes, make known every satta or sitta. Every secret thing uh, from generation to generation. He says, your splendid of the magnificence of your beauty of your Torah, it is forever and ever. And then he gives us a great descriptive knowledge of the great mysteries of Yom. He says, deep, 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 deep. Not shallow. We are a shallow generation. He says deep are all. Not some. They're deep. Deep are all your mysteries. Your that's uh, the depths. The inexsearchable things. Those things that are secrets. That you reveal only unto the Nabi, the prophet. The Nabiim, the prophets. That you have commanded on this means to feed the nation. That they may begin to prepare their minds against an opposition. That is beyond their visual concept to conceive in their mind. That's why we don't give attention to it. Because no one is teaching us. No one. He said not only are your mysteries that great. And they are powerful. Deep are your mysteries uh, he said, and they are numberless. There is no number that can be associated with the mysteries of Yah. You cannot quantify them. Because they are so deep that they qualify themselves. There is nothing we can do to qualify what Yah says. It is qualified by the qualification of what he says. It is so deep that you began to dig you will never understand. Because you will become baffled. These men today are baffled, even at Babel, even at Babel, Babylon, the mystery is, he says, and your sadiq, your righteousness is beyond accounting. No one can assess your righteousness 
and give an account for your righteousness. Only Yah gives an account for himself. That's why we must have the power of the Ru'ak. Not this vile demonic power of the Holy Ghost uh, and this vile thing that we call our own self-righteousness uh, because the Ru'ak constantly judge us that we can search out the depths in Torah of the great numberless and the riches uh, of Yah's great power. We're not doing that as a nation. We're not doing that individually. We're not doing that as a people. We're not doing that. It is just a fact. We can pretend, but we're not doing that. Your low reading produce nothing. That's all you do is read. That doesn't cause you to prevail against the powers of Yang. With that said, the mysteries of Babel, of Babel must be open. How do we assess that? How do we enter into that knowledge of that wisdom? Who is among the nation that can speak uh, with depth that is so simple that even the babes can understand? Where is the man? Where are those that have uh, a great insight of the wisdom of Torah that they speak so profoundly that it is esoteric, uh, it is beyond your ability uh, to grasp it. Uh, and the only way you can grasp it, it must be revealed by the Ru'ach. The Torah must be dependable as the one that spoke that unto you. The Torah must, the Torah must, uh, the Torah must define what the man speaks. So what I speak today, the Torah is going to define it. I have no intellectual abilities. I have no pedigree. I have no sons or daughters to pass it on to. So I have nothing in the natural sense. What I have is by the Ruach. And it comes by the Ruach. So we must have a certain element among us. That these great baths, uh, the deep, inaccessible, unsearchable things of Yah must be revealed unto us. You're not going to understand Babel by some book that some uh, demented Christian wrote. You're not going to understand that. Because one in that dimension, the mind is not open uh, unto the deep things of Yah. One doesn't understand the amok, uh, the great mysteries that are so profound uh, that they baffle the mind of man. Even Eob could not answer the question from Zophar. He sat there in amazement. Uh, only y'all could answer. And so when he said all of his friends down, he said, let's, you and me have a chat now. Let us. And they had a talk. And they reasoned from Torah. What does it take for us to have access to those unsearchable and inaccessible things of Yah? What does it take? If I show you from the Torah, will you believe it? Then that's where we show you from. The writings of the great men of mystery, they were not even understood in their time. Not some philosopher. I'm talking about prophets and messengers of Yah. Was there any man any wiser than Shalomo? No man. No man that Yah gave him the pattern to his bayat. He gave him the very pattern of the workings of Yahshua. And his heart was turned away by the many wives he had. To the gods, to the mysteries of their gods, that he denounced the most high. So if anyone could give us and can give us any researchable knowledge of that, it has to come from him. And that's a fact. And he gives us great insight in the book of wisdom. Write these down and do research them. Hallelujah. We must be able to assess or to access the great mysteries of the knowledge of Yah. We must. We must have men to search out the book, to refine, 
things in a way that we can understand simple men like me. And the wisdom, the hukma of Shalomo speaks in the book of wisdom, chapter 6. And verse 22, he speaks, he says, as for the hukma, as for wisdom, as for the skillfulness to battle against the opposition of Torah, that's what wisdom is. It fits us to be skilled warriors, to be geba, men of strength, and daughters that understand the beauty of the rush, understand the beauty of a man. It is not some sensual feeling, but it's one that is rich in the wisdom. And when they see the man of great strength, a man of wisdom, they relish in that. That their sons and the desirous desire one that is of that capability. That's the way it should be. So the wisdom of Shalom speaks profoundly. As for wisdom, what she is, what she is, look at the classification of wisdom. What he classifies wisdom as an issue, she, the beauty. That's why we'll never stop saying to you, daughters of Tizayon, the world makes you silly as hell and dumb and stupid. Make you unattractive and ugly. You don't want the sound wisdom of your forefathers and your, the imaim, the mothers of Ola. You don't want that. You want a Jesse Fluzy Bell to tell you how to attract one. Yes. We don't want that today. We despise that yes. wisdom of ancient. Yes. I don't take one damn word back. Yes. And the question was asked, how did wisdom come to be? What loins did she come out of? Uh, what bat him, what belly, what womb she came out of. I like what he says here, I will tell you. I will tell you where she came from. I will tell you her birth. I will tell you her order. He said, I will tell you. He said, and I will not hide the batsa, the mysteries from you. This is wisdom now. I will not hide the mysteries from you. He said, but I will trace her course out from the Rishi, from the beginning. You cannot understand Babel without understanding the beginning. You cannot understand the depths of Torah without understanding the beginning. He said, I will trace her course out from the beginning of her nativity, of her birth, her life, how she came about. He says, and I will bring da'at, I will bring discernment. I will give you da'at knowledge to discern of her into light, the light of Torah. It is one thing that she will not do. <clears throat> she will not pass over the truth. She will not pass over Torah. Wisdom will never bypass Torah. A man's wisdom is predicated, established upon his great labor of love of Torah. Yeah. As I read in the beginning in Bereshit, a Ben Adam, a man of of understanding of Bino wisdom, he trusts in the Torah. He trusts, he bought, he has confidence, his assurance of life and all that he does. It is from the Bereshit, the beginning of Torah. When you find a man that has not that great wisdom of Torah, he is an insolent, an ignorant, a stupid, a man that has no power of life in him. He has no character. He has no constitution. Why? He says the Torah is as dependable as I speak to you today. And a man of wisdom will search the Torah and see that the messenger of Yah, he spoke with preciseness and profoundness to reveal unto me that hidden peace 
that will bring knowledge that I may teach others the great wisdom of Yah. Shilomo goes on to say in Wisdom chapter 8 verse 4. Listen to this. Wisdom chapter 8 verse 4. He says she. Who is the she? It is the Ruchmach. Is the skill of understanding of the knowledge of Yah. She. That's what it says. She. Who is the she? Wisdom. She is the only thing that is privileged and privately privy, a privy to the mysteries, to the amukh. We must have men of great wisdom. She is the only one. Wisdom, she is privy. She is the only one that can assess where are the wise men when the Moshe Aharon, when they went in unto Pharaoh of Misraim, who did he call for? He called for the wise men that were privy to the mysteries of their God worship, to give discernment of these signs that were before him. And so when the staff, when the rod of Yah's truth was cast down and became a serpent, they cast theirs down and they became a serpent. And yet the Torah of Yah consumed them. And that's what the Torah of Yah does. When Yisrael Yah was in the wilderness in the Bimit Bar, when they sinned against Yah, when they could not identify they sin, then the serpent was raised up. And when they looked up to see the depravity of their sin, they were healed. And those that did not, they died. Only wisdom is privy. Only wisdom. We are the wise men. We will see what depth. Of a man's fruit. That you will know he's a wise man. Yeah. Only wisdom. Is privy to the amuk. Unto the deep mysterious. Deep inaccessible things of Yah. He says wisdom is privy. Is privy. To the mysteries of what the da'at. The knowledge. The power to discern. To understand. To understand the mysteries of Babel. To understand the mysteries of Babylon and uh, Babel or Babel. It is privily to what the knowledge of Almighty Yah. And wisdom is a lover of Yah's works, his mitzvah. Only wisdom is privy. So we're the wise men among the nation that has the privy of wisdom to assess, to understand the great mysteries. And above all, a one that we need to understand is the mystery of uh, Bobel. We need to understand the mysteries. Do we believe that Yah uncovers all his mysteries? That he did that unto those that were in the heavens? The Melachim, the angels? We believe that? See, that's what our shatan believes. That's why he got the people mesmerized. Yeah. I will give us a profound account for what's revealed. And there are things that are inaccessible. Only unto those that are the patriarchs of Israel. He revealed them unto wise men. Hallelujah. Hannah gives us a profound account. I cannot go away from the book. I didn't come by this by reading a book, apply what the book said to this book. No, it doesn't come that way for me. I cannot do it. I simply labor. I labor in the book and I assess each word and I try to find the depths of each word. He doesn't reveal everything. When Yah reveals his secrets unto man, that is a profound regard and respect. Let's read this together. In the writings of Hanak, Hanak, 
chapter 16. As Hanak speaks of a time of great destruction to those that, in those days that were giants, but those that, that have exalted themselves without creed or credential above everyone, the nation. You got to understand that. We got to understand the power of Babel, how it is defined. We don't even know how is it defined, and most people can't tell you that. They will tell you it means confusion. Why? We will point out truth today. Yeah. Hanak says in Hanak 16 and 1, from the days of the great slaughter and destruction, and the death of the giants, when the death of the giants, and not only them, but those beings, he calls them spiritual beings of the spirit and the flesh, from which they have proceeded from. That that's how those that were giants in the land, they proceeded from those that were spiritual beings. The Nephthalites. They proceeded from them. He says, they came from flesh and that which was spirit. They proceeded forth. And what they did, which will corrupt without incurring judgment. They will corrupt until the day of the great conclusion. When Yah says, uh, it is finished. They will constantly corrupt. There are those that are of that birth line among the nation today. And that's a fuck. He says, until the great age is consummated... Until everything uh, is concluded uh, upon the watcher and the wicked one. He says to us in verse 2. And so to one that watches. He says to Yeskel. I want you to be a watchman. And watch. To, to inspect. To see the house. Where are the watchmen today? Where are the men that are strong and beautiful that they have curtailed their life, their lifestyles, their hearts according to their dependence on Torah? You got a lot of talkers that they will talk and repudiate and their lives are not worth a damn. Their lives are not worth a damn. There's no power, strength. We get together, we laugh and we mock. We clown like jackasses. We're watching for the house of Yisrael. Yeah, there's no time for that. We must be sober, elderly men in grave. Stop your damn laughing. Stop your cackling that is hurt. I don't care who you are. You stop it. You must be wise men. You must be sober in your activity. There's no time for laughter. It's time for weeping and crying. We need watchmen. We need men to, to inspect. Above all, they constantly respect their hearts and their minds. They refine them through the dependence of Torah. Why? Because uh, they want that wisdom and the knowledge of Yah's understanding to be revealed unto them that when they speak at all, men will listen. You don't say two or three words and laugh. You don't say five or six words and laugh. Uh, it's not of Yah. Yeah. I want us all. I want us all. You daughters of Tizayon, you men uh, of Yerushalayim that guards uh, the gates of Jerusalem, we must stop. We must stop. Today, when you hear, you stop. He talks about the watchmen. In verse 2. And so the watchers on whose behalf have you been sent to intercede? Who are the watchmen interceding for? Who are they watching out for and interceding at? Even Abraham, Yah said, if you find ten, he interceded. I will save the city, Shodom and Gomorrah. Who were formerly, they were formerly, they were formerly in the Hashemayim, say to them. Those were the beings, they were spiritual beings. They had their dwelling in the heavens. They had their dwellings in the heavens. That's where they were. He says this now in verse 3. He said, you were once in the heavens. We don't even mind the heavenly things of Yah. 
Our minds are not on the heavenly things of Yah. Our minds are not on the heavenly things of Yah. We don't look up to see our redemption. We don't lift up our eyes and our voices unto the heavens. He said, you were once. You were once. You were once in the heavens. But this is what he says. But not all. But not all. But not all the mysteries of the Hashemadam were opened to you. I didn't open them all to you. You were once there. You have the privilege and the privy to stand before my altar and offer up the accolades of my great esteem and my splendor. But I didn't reveal everything to you. I didn't reveal it all unto you. You serenade before my altar and then you go down and you engage with the creature that I made to esteem me and to honor me. I made him lower than you. But you were not privy. You were not privy to all. That's what he says, doesn't he? You were not privy to all of the mysteries, the betsa, the unsearchable things of Yah. You were not even privy to the depths of Hamashiach, not even Hashatan. Because if he had known that he impelled the son of Yah, the powers of hell would have never did that. They were not privy. Were there those that were privy? The one that stands for the God of Israel. His name is Micaiah. He was privy. He was privy. And Gabriel, he was privy to that. Not even Hashotan. That's why he sought in the beginning of bondage with the masses of killings. Kill them all. Destroy them. Every son of a Hebrew woman, of a Hebrew woman, I want every son to be butchered and to be aborted. And so we find the same phenomenon today. I'm trying to circumvent the coming of Yoshua Hamashiach. He was not even privy. Because if they had known, they would have never impaled Yoshua. They would have never destroyed him. Because in that death, the power of Yah's revelation, the strength of Torah might was revealed unto a people, and we sell it off for damn donuts. For our own fall in our own sins, that's just the truth, Yisrael. We sell it off for nothing, for our own lies and our own corruption, for the stench of our own ovine, our own von, our perverse thinking, our, our wicked mentality. I will show you where it comes from. I want to take my time. It's hard for me to do that. I shall. They were not all privy. The mysteries were not accessible for them. He says unto them, You were once in the heavens, but not all the mysteries of heaven, that they were open unto you. Shotach, that is open. The word shotach mean, means that it is of a simple simplicity, of a simple mind. That's what shotach. People say, well, you're open-minded. It's simple. So they were not even opened to you. And you only, and you only know the ma'as or the rejected. All you know right now are the mysteries that are rejected by Yah. He uses the word, and now, does it say that? And you only, Yada, know the ma'as, the rejected mysteries of Mukh, the things that you believe are deep and mystery, mysterious. He says, and those ones that you know, you have broadcasted to the women in the hardness of your heart, and by those mysteries, the women and the men multiply evil deeds. You only know that what I've opened to you. And you have induced them in the mind of the women. And today's women, I love your daughters, but they become evil and mean. It is the truth, O woman. They're mean and they're evil. They're not to be kind and sweet. They're mean. The man has no taste and no love for them. 
And that's just a fact, Israel. You don't realize how mean they are. They have been taught. And those women that seduced Shalomo, they were taught. They were of the same nature of those spiritual beings and women. And these are the same women. I love your daughters that think that they are spiritual. And think that they have a great depth of the wisdom of Yah. And yet they do not perform what Torah commands. That's an evil thing. You have men that think that they are wise and they are evil. Their hearts have no compassion for Torah at all. It is a heart that is full of loss. It engages with every kind of vile, deceitful thing there is. But a great love for Yah and a great wisdom of Yah's Torah. You don't even see that today among the men today. All you see proceeding out is evil and much evil uh, and depravity. He said, those things that I reveal, uh, you knew that the woman was weak, so you went into her and you gave that to her uh, and, and she began to utilize that. Uh, and she began to birth weak sons uh, that their ways are effeminate uh, and soft. They have not the strength of you. Your daughters, I don't give a damn what you think of me. You're going to pay. He warns you in your childbearing and your birth of children. He warns you that way and we don't frankly give a damn. He tries to give us an approval, men. In the sweat of our ponim, in hell we don't want our ponim to sweat. We don't want to work hard. I don't care if you don't love me. And I'm not going to stop using the word I don't give a damn. Damn this wicked generation. You better shut your mind off from it. I'm not going to stop using it. Yahshua yeah. said that he that believe on me and he immerse, he shall be Yahshua. Yeah. He that believe not, he's going to be damned. Yeah. He said, damn them all. Yeah. You don't take my word and give accountability to my word, it means nothing. Yeah. He says... Uh, those amok, those deep mysteries and the depth of the unsearchable things. Hanak 16.3. He said, those ones you have broadcast to the women. See, he, he did not say the man. He said, you broadcast to the women. It was the woman that transgressed, not the man. You have given them to the woman because you know her heart is weak. You have women that will send me things. And I want to tell all your daughters, don't send me your YouTubes. Don't send me your things that you have read and you think that is going to inspire. Don't send me that, daughters. And I'm telling you that again. Do not send me that. I don't care who you are. You have not found anything. Because when you find something of wealth, it will transform you. You have a found a damn thing. Don't send it to me. I mean it. You women, don't send me that. Don't send me that. You're going to send me something as though you have an insight of wisdom to look at that. It will inspire you. It doesn't inspire me. You make me mad. You make this righteous man. Angry. Don't send me that. I'm talking to every last one of you. I'm talking to you all, daughters. Don't send it to me. I said it one last time. Don't send me anything. Send me a, some tithes and offering. Don't send me that. I'm telling you, don't send me that. The men you have, you're used to doing that with men. He used the woman. See, these women want to send me things. Read that. I think that you will see that uh, th th this one got something that may help you. He doesn't have a damn thing. When I look at a man, I can hear the way he talks. He has nothing. I know what he has. I don't waste my time. Don't send me that. Don't send me some damn article you found you think is of great value. There's only one thing that is dependable. The book. The Torah. I can see if you write me and say, explain this to me. These wicked men that do that. Don't send me nothing. Send me tithes and all. Send an offering. Send an offering. Don't send me nothing. These old silly weak men, they buy that. I don't buy it. They use the women. They impart it into the woman. For what? I read what it says. It says, uh, and these are the ones that broadcast to the women in the hardness of your heart, because your heart was hard against me. And those that fell, I call them angels. I call the ones of the heavens and the messengers of you. I call them the Melachim or the Melach. I call them angelic beings, 
those angels that fell. He says, by the hardness of your hearts and by the mysteries, the women and men. See, the women and men, because you're a hard woman, huh? You have brought forth birth. You have brought forth sons. The women and men multiply evil deeds upon the earth. Tell me, Yisra'ya, these young boys talk to their mothers like their dogs today. They sit down and bump and smoke weed and get drunk. Go to the same club with them. I never did that with my mother. I never, 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 as a man, I would have been ashamed to do it. I never sat down and had one drink with them. Never, 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 not a beer. And I was as wicked as any man. Because of you women, because of your evil sadistic way, you think that she is evil, but you're not evil. Where are your fruits? See, the men and women multiply. They come by the birth of the chamber of a woman. He says, tell them, you will know that this is evil spirit. They have no depth of the mysteries of Yah. He said, therefore, you will have no shalom. You have no peace. How many of the women today they have no shalom? They have no peace at all. They have no confidence. I don't care if you don't say hallelujah. You birth sons today that have no shalom. They are not at ease. Your sons, your daughters are running to and fro in the earth trying to find shalom and they're finding mis miseries. I had one to write me last night that used to live here. And, and the person said, Riyak, I'm not ashamed. I don't have pride where I'm, my life is miserable. I start to bring the letter and read it. She said, please help me. Just please. I don't care what you can do. I'm not like those that left here that have pride. I need your help, and I, I, I'm writing you because I know that of all men, all people, if there's anything can be done, you'll do it. She said, life is nothing like what I thought it was going to be. And the things that I thought that I could accomplish, just not that way. What I thought that was real is just not real. What I says to have value, there is no value to it. I, and I'm miserable, almost depressed. I say, man. I don't go to that. I say, yeah. Hallelujah. You provide the means. I will help the person. We will. This is a wicked, damn wicked generation. We don't love men that love Yah. We don't give a damn about them. We don't care about their burdens. We don't care about the agony of their hearts. Because you're so consumed with you, we don't frankly give a damn. We tell the damn lie that we love. You're liars. We are flat out liars. I do too. I believe what he says do right by all men, especially Yisraya. I'm not going to put her before the nation. You don't need anything. We're fat and greedy. We're fat and we're greedy. We're fat and we're greedy. All of us. Bobet, Babylon, the mystery. You understand my uh, uh, See, most people want to just go right to the solution. And they don't want the process of learning. They don't want that. Because they want to be the masters over others. And this teaching was simply began to open the door that you can assess the deeper depths of Yah's great mysteries. I won't be here always. You're sure knew that he wouldn't be there always. So he had to open up the light unto the nations. Moshe knew that when he laid his hands on Yahushua, that he, he, the same ruach in him imparted. It must be that way. We need strong young men today that... And the Zachane passes on the mantle, Eliah, Eli, uh, Eliyah, that the man will proceed, and he will stand in the same Ruach. And it's the Ruach that shines. It's not any man. We all go down to death, to the darkness of Sheol. You broadcast all those things that you thought that would get me. You knew that my seed will come through a woman. And so does the seed of Babel. So does that seed come through a woman. 
I read all that to begin here that we began to dissect and uncover Bobel, the mysteries. We have some understanding of what the mysteries are and those things that have been covered. And that not even those beings that fell, they have no depth of it. He gave them things because he knew that they were corrupt. That's why they turned against him. When we turn against Taurus because we are corrupt, we have corrupted ourselves. We have corrupted our own hearts, Yisraya. That's why we become so adamant, so distant, so with such disdain for Torah. And those that speak words of correction to us, we despise them. We don't realize the evil that is in us. I would have begun here. I want to define, first of all, Nimrods. This is not my definition of his name. It is the Aramaic and the Hebraic expression. I know we say Nimrod, but it is Nimrod, what his name implies. The name Nimrod, it implies one thing, rebellion, rebellious. It is rebelliousness. And to understand that, Bereshit, Genesis, chapter 10, and verse 8. It is a mind that esteems itself and rebels against Almighty Yah. It says in Genesis chapter 10, verse 8, it tells us the lineage of Nimrod. It says that Cush, the son of Nuach, it uses the words begot or yalads. He came forth out of that genealogy. He is the one that brought forth Nimrod, the one that was rebellious, the spirit of rebelliousness, the mindset that rebelled because it is something that those angels taught. To the birth of the chamber of Nimrod's mother, we will see it as the mystery of Babel is revealed. We will see that. It says he began to be, uh, it used the words Gibor, a mighty, it not say just a mighty warrior, but it says a, a, a mighty Echad, a mighty one in the earth. He began to exude himself in the mindset of the rebellionists uh, and the secrets that were revealed unto him uh, through the birth corridor of his mother. It's amazing that they, during the 70s, and it became more prolific in the 80s and 90s, uh, they would say, mothers, you want to make your babies smart, read to them and do all of this. Uh, and the women did that, did they not? Did not the women begin to do that? Because they want their babies to be smart and geniuses and, and brainy. Did not they began to do that? Let them listen. That's how ignorant we are. It is the fault. And yet they were onto something. They were on to something. They were onto something great and mighty. Because these angels, when they fell, they reveal those secrets unto the women. And the women birthed that in their men's sons. Or the men in their womb. And they will talk that. And they will speak. And they say, mothers, talk to your babies. Speak to them. Tell your babies you love them. And they began to talk of the mysteries of Yah that that birth will be revealed through the lineage of time. And although these things were hidden in the darkness of the mind of man, they didn't understand. But when the spirit of Nimrod, or the spirit of rebelliousness rose upon them, what do we began to do? We began to imagine, don't we? The spirit of rebelliousness rise up on what we began to imagine. We fight against women because they told me what they said. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I, I'm, I don't want to be a part of it. I don't want to help them. You, you understand? I'll break it down to us. I'll break it down. I'll break it down and it's simple. That's how we think. We began to rebel. I, I just don't like I don't like I don't want to be around him. There's a birth in you, mother. There's something in you saw that mama put there. And the only way it's going to come out is must be revealed. 
By the light of Torah, we need men that have wisdom, not clowns and jackasses. I mean that, men. As a young man, ignorant as they come, I had a, a, a nurturing of me that I wanted to act like a man. I wanted to be like a man. I wanted to stand like a man. I wanted my persona to be like a man. I wanted my words to be like a man. I didn't act like young men. I didn't go the way they went. I didn't do it, Yisrael. Not that I was any greater. I didn't do it. I didn't pump out babies. I didn't do it. And that's just a fact. It's going to all tie in. I want to establish the mysteries today. We'll get to the deeper stuff. This is deep here. You understand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says that he began to become a gibor, a mighty one in the earth. Now hear this. In verse 9. One of the same magnitude of Nimrod. His name was Esau. But it says here in Genesis chapter 10 verse 9, Nimrod, he was a mighty hunter before Yah. Wherefore it is said, do you hear that? This one that rebelled, it is said, it is said. That is why it is said, even Nimrod, even the rebellious one, Nimrod, he was a gibor, a mighty hunter before Yah. In essence, that the accolades of his great strength and that which was birthed in him by his mother, the mysteries of those fallen angels that was birthed through the chamber of that mother and those that were subject unto him, they began to esteem him as equal to Yah. They began to raise him up and try up the power of his great strength and the attributes of Nimrod. They began to exalt him. They began to bow. They began to worship him. That's why it is said that this one that is rebellious, he is mighty. Even when he stands before the creator, he has to recognize it. Do you understand what that just said? That's what it said. I know it's hard for us to understand, but that's what it said. And so the mind of those through those mysteries that were revealed by the spiritual beings unto the women in their chamber, and they gave them the commands, the law, as to what to speak to that child. Or if you want your child to be, art, uh, to be artistic, uh, or to be an artist, then let them hear classical music and, and all of this. And, and let them hear those kinds of things. And so mothers that never listened to classical music, they began to play that for their babies. You will find them reading all kinds of books to their babies. They didn't read Torah. But they will read some crazy mess and so those words uh, that resonated of the secrets that were revealed unto the mothers, uh, they began to speak that into the child. And so they spoke that into Nimrod. His name Nimrod means rebellious. Rebellious. That's what Nimrod is. Nimrod. Uh, it means rebellious. And so he rebelled against the order of Yah from the beginning. And by him rebelling against the order of Yah, he equated himself as a mighty, a mighty one. And so the minds of the people through the power of that spirit, or the spirit of Babel, we don't understand how the spirit is generated. I know we don't. I will teach us. I don't speak this way to mock us and to show our, us our limited ability to understand things. I speak this the way to show you how ignorant we all are. And we ought to appreciate Yahweh when he raised up a simple messenger to break, those messengers to break things down to us. Because we don't know. And when a man labors where he finds time to the Ruach, that he finds time to do what he has to do to say, yeah, open the book. If it's in the late hours of the night... Well, the early hours of the morning. I'm not here to play. You can. I'm not a damn clown. You can clown. I'm not going to clown. And then we can appreciate that man, the gift. I'm not here for that. 
So the doors will open. That's why men and women do evil deeds, don't they? We do evil things. So evil. So sadistic. Our hearts are so cold. Because of Ovon. We don't give a damn about no one. We don't care. We say we care, but we don't give a damn. You say this in the sense, I don't want my ark to outwork me. I don't care how I feel. I want to outwork him. Why do I do that, my Iman? Because I want to let him know how much I appreciate you. I want to outwork him. That's why I let no man outwork me. I want him to know I appreciate it when I don't feel like it. When I don't feel like it. Because I appreciate all you do, man. It is of great value. I'm going to proceed today. I'll get done. Hallelujah. I've got a little time. So Nimrod became this mighty warrior of Yad, this mighty man that the cities and the people began to esteem him as a mighty one. And this is where it gets somewhat not complicated, but we must understand the words here. And verse 10 of Bereshit 10, 10. It talks about the beginning of his kingdom, of his melchuts, of his dominion, his monarchy, his authority, his power. It tells us that the Rashid, or the beginning of his uh, kingdom, his reign, the beginning of his kingdom was Bobel. Bobel. That which is created in the mind of one that is rebellious. Now, Bobel doesn't mean what we think it is, because there's a reason that Bobel exists or Babylon exists. You've got to understand. Hear this. He says, uh, it was Babel and Erech, that kingdom which grows exponentially and continue to proceed or to progress. And also Akhad. And then it talks about Kelneth. It was all these kingdoms, these cities, they were in one land because uh, uh, Babel was a city. It was a city. It was what the Torah calls an ear. And they all was in one place. This is what we must understand and we forget it. It was in the lawn of Shina. We will never try to understand the land of Shina. We read that and we proceed to the next verse. I'm going to stop there for a moment. Because the land of Shina means the land of of the two rivers. There were two rivers that Yah says, the great Nile and the great Euphrates, even the land of the Canaanites. That's the land of his people. Not that little strip of land uh, that we call Yisrael, but he gave them the land from the two great rivers, from the great Nile or the great river of Misraim and the great uh, Euphrates River that will accommodate 50, 100, 200 million people. He gave them that land. When we began, as I read to us on Chit Ve'imet, we must understand the numeric value of the number two. It implies that it is, there is no dimension. It is a definite, it is solidified, it is the actual. We must, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So there was two profound things, uh, whether it is agreeable in the tough sense uh, or in the evil sense, to signifies that there's no division. There's no divide. And the two, the ish and the isha becomes uh, ikat. They become one. So he began to erect a kingdom uh, out of a mindset of rebellion as uh, and the nation of Yah is a rebellious people. See, we're looking for a city. I am looking for the city. I'm looking for a renewed new Jerusalem that's coming down out of the heavens. So when I walk, I look up, oh, hallelujah. I'm not going to cry, but that. The word Ushina means the land 
are the two rivers or the yam, the waters that flow. What are the two rivers? What are the significance of the two concerning Babel? I want to give you some insight on that. What that two or the country of the two rivers of Babel. Babel. Babel implies that it is a mixture. Is that which is mingled. When they came out of Misraim, was there not a mixed people among them? Who began to complain? Who began to murmur? You don't have to answer me. You know it. You don't have to be fearful. But just think about it. It says, and the mix. They began to complain against the young. And when one has mixed the spiritual dynamics of these fallen angels with the Torah of Yah, that's, you're going to complain. You're going to rebel. And you're going to be confused and confound. But that is, that is the profoundness of the word Babel. It is mix and mixture. We're trying to mix the things of the rock, trying to mix those things with the things that are natural and that is a Babel. And it doesn't work that way. What is the significance of the two? Yah has a two-edged sword. It's sharper. His word is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It cannot be divided, Yisraeli. So there's great significance. So I'm a student, so I, I want to understand what I see that Shuna. Well, well, where's this land? I understand that. But I want to understand the dimension and the dynamics of the land of Shuna. And what I find that it's the land of two rivers. I, I want to search where are the rivers. What are these rivers? It's beyond the concept of a natural order to understand. You don't understand this by, by, by studying uh, the geographics. Um, uh, of a place uh, and trying to associate it in some historical equation, I must depend upon Torah. And the answer comes from Torah. I would have begun here, right? The two rivers of Shunan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear this, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We have those who say, well, we're in Babel or Babel, Babylon here in America. Have you ever heard that? Yes. Sure, you have, especially those that call themselves Hebrew Israelites. They say that all the time. But that's a lie, it's false. Babel is beyond this nation. Can I give us one scripture, I believe? Let me read this and I will show us, all right? Turn, as the old ones would say in the text, to Micaiah. To the book of Micah, Micaiah. It says this, now I want you all to hear this. It says, and they shall waste the land of Ashur. With the swords. And he goes on to say in Micah 5 and 6, he uses the word land or erech. There's a difference between the ulam, the erech, the ear, the cities. The words erech means the four corners of the earth as he puts a scattered Yisraya. He says the land, the land, the word erech. So the word Erech means that it is the entire earth, the old lamb encompass. It's every stitch of land. Whether it's the continent of Africa or what we call a continent Australia. Whether it's New Zealand or whether it's Russia, it is Erech. Whether it's America or Canada, it did not say a piece or a, a, a land or a city. It uses the word Erech. Now listen to what it says. He says, and the land of Nimrod, you hear that? The land of Nimrod is the entrance of it. In order to understand or enter into that mindset of that land, we must come by the rebellious nature of the land of Nimrod. Tell me what land is not rebellious. Tell me what people is not rebellious. Tell me what nation has not rebelled against Yah. It talks about the land. It talks about the Shina. It talks about the place where the two rivers are. And upon every continent whereby there is a gateway of rivers and water, there is where the culture is developed. He said the Lord of Nimrod is the entrance of it. Listen, this shall Yah deliver us from the Assyrians. He's going to deliver his nation from the Assyrians, from the Ashur, and we shall come into our own land, into the land of promise unto Abraham. He said, then Yah shall deliver us. 
He said, and when they tread within our borders, when they come to try to overtake us, this is our triumphant power here. That's why when I talk to us on the, on the Hachel or the temple of the house of Yah, listen to this in Micaiah 5, 7. He says, and the remnant of the boy here of Yaakov shall be in the midst of many, not just this land. When it says many, it is talking about the Rabbah. It is the multiplicity. It is the nations of the earth. They shall be among many, many, not one. Well, all the Israelites are here in America and the Caribbean. That's a damn lie. They're on the continent of Africa, they're in Russia, they're in China, they're in Britain. And the, and, the, and the skin complexion of them range from one to the extreme of all. From one to all. Now he's talking about his remnant of Yaakov. Yaakov Yisrael, not the supplanter. But Yisrael, he says that that remnant of Yaakov shall be in the midst of many people. As the dew of the earth. As the dew from Yah, when the dew falls from Yah, it falls on everything. It doesn't say to you, I'm not falling on you. It falls on the cow, falls on the wicked man, falls on the harlot and the whoremonger of a man. It falls on the dead grave and the one that is dead in their sins. That's how the dew of Yah falls. Now, that's how he's given us an expression that we may understand the very depth, first of all, of the land of Nimrod. Uh, and the only way they're going to come against the nation uh, is through the land, is through the spirit, the power of Nimrod. What is that? Yeah. We don't know, Yisrael. Yeah. I tried to do it quietly, Mama, but it's just hard for me to do it. Yeah. He says... As the showers upon the grass, that tarry is not for man. The showers don't wait and say, don't rain, I need to get in the house. No wait for the sons of men or the benadum. It doesn't wait. When it shower, it showers. Now, I don't care where you are, it showers. Listen. It says, I'm the remnant of the boy here of who? Of Jacob? Jacob? What shall they be? They shall be among the Gentiles. They shall be among the Goin, the nations, the heathen nations, the nations of what? Of many people. See, they're going to be among the nations of what? Just a few people or many? Many people. Oh, I know there are many ethnicities in America, but there are many ethnicities throughout the world. They're going to be, it did not say they're going to be, uh, it said they're going to be on the Goin. It said Gentiles. Is there a S on the word Gentile? There's an S because that means that there's more than one nation. The word goe, G-O-E-E -E, means a singular nation. The word G-O-Y-I-M means goim. It means the multiple of nations. It means more than one nation. He said they're going to be in the midst of them. How? He said of many people. See, that's why he had the lions of their full replica in the house. As what? A lion. That's where they're going to be like a lion. That's where they're going to be like, like a lion. Everything in that house it was in the prophecy before the house was ever built. There will be like a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flock of sheep. And a young lion among the flock of the sheep, it doesn't play. It kills indiscriminately. It destroys and eats. If he goes through both treads down and tear in pieces, and none can deliver. No one's going to deliver Nimrod. No one. Why? Because there are two rivers that flow out of the land of Shuna that bring forth the very strength and the power of Nimrod. It is a great mystery we don't understand. I will prove it in the book, all right? Hallelujah. It says this, your hands, your hands shall be lifted up upon your adversaries and your enemies shall be cut off. You must go by the land of Nimrod. What is Yah saying? You must go through that land of Nimrod. That's what I read here in Micaiah. He says in chapter 5 verse 6, he says the land of Ashur or Ashur with the sword. That's how they're going to come. And he said they're going to come. They're going to come against the nation with the swords. With the sword of their mouth. With the sword of their power. The military. The monetary. He says and the way they're going to come and the land of the Erech, they got to come to the land of Nimrod. And the land of Nimrod were positioned there in Shunah, the land 
are the two rivers. That two river or the two rivers are vitally important to understand. I want to share a little insight that we may understand that, that we as a nation of people, we may be strong with great understanding and wisdom of what the book says. I want to give you some insight and open up a little light unto you. Hallelujah. Now let us turn to the writings of Yeskel. Let us turn there. I want to read this for us. Hallelujah. Shina, as I said, it means the country of the two rivers. What does that imply? There are two ways. There are two ways that this land of Shina or the spirit of Nimrod captivates a nation and a people. And this is the great opposition and the mystery among the nation of Yisra'ya. We don't understand because everybody's looking for a city. They're saying that it's America. But the, but, but, but the, but, but the land of Nimrod or the, the, the very nature of Nimrod, it is in the Erech. It is in the four corners of the earth. Show me a people that's not rebellious. You tell me Chinese children don't rebel against their parents? You tell me Japanese children don't rebel against their parents? You tell me that those that are on the land of Africa and their children, whether they are of the Zulu tribe or the Zamba tribe, they rebel against their parents. Whether they're down in the Amazon forest, they all rebel. By the birth of Nimrod, those that were spiritual beings, they used the woman. That's why your daughters, you got to be prayed up and ready. That's the old folks who say, you got to be prayed up and stayed up and ready up and ready to go. Yes. We're ready for Walmart and every kind of damn adventure, but we're not ready for total delight. Yeah. We don't want to sit down and pray. Yeah. You don't want to pray for the man. Hallelujah. He's out laboring and toiling. You're not laboring like him. Yeah. There's not a wife around him who labors like one man. True. And that's a damn fuck. Not even in the world, they want to make it light for the woman. I go to Sam's, I don't make it light. I'm not taking this, I put all this stuff on one cart. You want me to take it and put it on another cart, and then I got to take it to my cart? No, ma'am. I put it on the cart whereby even a baby can go through. I put it so neat. All the barcodes, everything is in an order. When I put it in the car, it's easy to do it. And you're going to just put it on the cart, and you think I'm going to help you give me a, a, a mess that I got to untangle? No, I'm not going to do that. I don't care if they're 99 or 9. I don't help them. That's a fact. I don't care if their pants so tight they can't even bend over. And their gut hanging over their pants makes me no different. And I stand back and I just look. And I dare you to say something to me. And you can tell when they get fights that they get upset like, you can't help me. No, I'm not going to help you. Your spirit is not even right. I'm not going to help you. And I would say to them, what you all need to do is change the processes and refine this and show them that's why they hire you because they know you're qualified. I said to one woman, I know you're a bright individual because you would not be in this position unless you had the, the accumulation of knowledge and wisdom to perform in this position. Oh, she said, oh, yes, 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 I am. You have her. Your belly hanging all out of you. And it's a jelly belly. It's a jelly belly. You got on something so tight that your belly just hanging over like that. It's so jelly when you walk, it moves like jello. Come on, woman. They know you're a silly woman. I just look at them. And they're afraid to look at me. That's the strength of a sure man. For the woman is afraid to look at him. For the woman thinks she's finer than fine buttermilk. She's afraid to look at him. You know he's, he's standing tall. Ain't not about his looks. Uh-uh. Ain't that? You know he's a man. And then you turn this way and then they're watching. You know. That's the fact. No, I don't boast in my wicked flesh. It has no value. But it happens all the time. So when they're afraid, you know when they see it, you know they're afraid. See, a woman is afraid of a of a man. Just like men are afraid of women that they think are voluptuous and have sensuality. They're afraid of them. They, <laughs> they don't know what to say. They can't. So same thing with a woman. They're not that bold. They're not that brazen and bad. Fact. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fact. 
They're afraid to look at him. They won't look at him. And that's why we don't look to Yah for nothing. Yes, girl. You're going to have to prove this to me, man, from the book. You said that the Torah is dependable. <clears throat> a wise man, he knows that the Torah is dependable. You're not very wise, David. It says in the book of Yeskin, this is the power of the entrance of Baven, Boben, Babylon, Nimrod, the spirit of rebellion. It says in the writing of Yeskel, chapter 21, verse 18, it tells us that the word, the Dabarim, the Daba, it came. The word of Yah came. Chaya, it entered. Chaya, I am. Yeskel, Ezekiel 21, 18. It says that the word of Yah came to me. This is Yeskel, this is Ezekiel Yah talking. Again now, saying, this is what he says. Verse 19, also you, he called him Ben Adam. Son of man, as we would say, Ben Adam. He says to him, this is what Yah says to Yeskel. He says, I want you to appoint, to make, to establish. Ezekiel 21, 19. I want you to appoint two ways. Two ways now. This is how the great flood of corruption has infiltrated the house of Yisra'ya through the very nature of Nimrod. We all think we're mighty. We all think we're mighty. All men think they're mighty. As Azar came once says, well, Reach, he, will, he outshine you. Well, I will always outshine a young boy. He just overshadows you. Well, I'm supposed to overshadow. I am supposed to. I am supposed to. Are you supposed to overshadow? I'm supposed to. I am the light of the earth. I'm a city. He said, I want you to appoint two ways. There are two ways, Shinar, the great two rivers of Shinar, whereby this great flood of corruption, how it overtakes a nation. There are two ways. I want to show you that. Two ways whereby this flood overtakes a nation. He says, uh, these are the ways I want you to appoint. Hear this. Yes, girl. Uh, Ezekiel 21, 19. Uh, he said that the sword, that the sword of the king of Babel, of Babel, of Babylon, may come. I want you to open up a way, two ways now. The river Shunah, Nimrod. He began to establish his nation. There was only one way that Ashur was able to penetrate the nation of the remnant of Yah. And it had to go by the land of the Erech. And the Erech is the, is, the, it is the land that consists of the whole earth. Whereby the spirit of Nimrod, by Babel, could enter in among the people of Yah. And that's a fact. He did not say a point one way. He said, I want you to point two ways. I want the both of the rivers to be opened. I want the rivers that flow out of Shunah to be opened. I know we just read. We don't law hide. We don't study. We don't, we don't massage our minds in what words implies. He did not say open up one way. He said two ways. For what reason? There are two ways whereby the power of the mysteries of Babel, Babel, Babylon, enters into a nation. Only two ways, Yisrael, yeah. And of course, we will never consider ourselves of having this in us. He said, I want you to appoint two ways. For what that the Melak, the king of Babel, Babel may come. You tell me, yeah, you have commanded this king to come upon a nation. Upon the world, he said that the king of Babel may come. He says, both paths, does it say that in your writing? Yes. Both of the paths shall come forth out of one land. What land? The land of Shina. The land. Listen. He said that both 
paths shall come out of the out of one land and choose you a place, choose you at the head of the way of the city. Now that's important. The rush, the head of the way of the city, that's what Jena is. The rivers that flow out of the city, they flow, the two rivers that flow out of the head of the city, Yisraya. And each one of these words are very important now. Everything that Yeskel says here is important. He said, I want you to point a way that the sword that came out of Rabbah, the great, upon the uh, Ammoni, uh, and to Yahura into the walls, walled Yerushalayim. Now listen to this. This is it here. This is it. 21, 21 of Yeskel. I read it slowly. For the king, for the Melak, for the king of Bobel stood at the what? Parting ways. So when they're parting ways, that means it's like this, doesn't it? At the two places. We're ignorant. We don't love men that are spiritual because they judge. And the king of who? Bobel. He stood at the parting ways. You come down a road, as they would say in the old country days, as they're going down the way, you go, and the roads parted. One this way, and one that way. And as they walked the road together, they talked and they conversed, didn't they? And so when the roads parted, she said, as I see you go, as it going on, you didn't know if she's a got home or not. But you knew that you, you knew that she's a got home. Because if she's a didn't, she's a didn't get home, uh, you would hear the word. So you parted ways. He said, I want the king. I want the spirit of Nimrod, this rebelliousness, to stand at the ways that part. You find that among the nations, don't you? You got two. You got the house of Yehuda. You got the house of Ephraim. They don't allow the king to stand. They don't allow Yahshua to stand at the way and say, you wicked Ephraim, Yahud, you have nothing to be grandizing about. You got a husband and a wife, the Yah says, the Ikat. you got the wife going this way and the husband going that way. The wife say, this is my money, I do what I want to. This is my house, this is my car. And the husband, that's wickedness. I don't give a damn who you are. You might as well love me. You might as well love me. He said, I want the king to stand at the way where they part. So when ways part, then that means that there are two ways. Why would he stand there? I'll show you why. Hallelujah. He said, you at the ways that part, the two ways where they part, he says, and at the head of how many ways? Does it say one way or two ways? Jena, the two ways. To use Kesem, witchcraft, rebellion. It's not rebellion as a sin of witchcraft. That's why women always rebel. They hate other women. Women hate women. You don't want to look courage to say, oh man. I don't give a damn if you all don't know. Women hate women. They despise them. Can I show you an example? Oh, I'm going to get back. You all can go to sleep on me. Make sure. It's almost like, I don't mean to be offensive, but I say, it's almost like four or five fat women that they all together. One says, I'm sick of this. She loses weight. All of a sudden, the other three began to dog her. She thinks she's, look at her. And then they become very insensitive to her. That's a damn fact. Yeah. Men say, well, homeboy, give me some of that. What's up, dog? Boom, boy, you look at man. You, oh, man, man, I got to do something. That's how men talk. That's how men talk. Homie, man, I, hey, what's, what's up, player? Woo! Dog. Hey, what's up, dog? You walking, man. Hey, you look. Man, look how you look. See, women would say, oh, you look so nice and feel to see what she loves. <clears throat> she did something. 
You hypocrites. She did something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That heifer did something. She don't look as nice as she thinks she look. Because you look bad, so you want to criticize her. She, don't, she did something. What's she doing? I'm going to watch her. Mm -hmm. Man, say, homeboy, what, come, come on, talk to me, dog. Tell me something, player. Because I, I know I need to trim it off, baby. That's how men talk. Give me some insight, dog. Come on, dog. That's just a fact. That's how men talk. Women will hate each other. Women will hate. They get mad and angry. Men will say, dog, come on now. What, what are you doing, baby? You look... Oh, man, and everybody would just rejoice. Man, I feel ashamed, man. Let me pull out my shirt. Man, I'm going to take my shirt out of my britches. I look a mess, man. But dog, you come on, player. You're playing that. I'm using that kind of vernacular because I know how men talk. Say, homeboy, you, you're straight with that, baby. You look, quote, good. I'm using it just for, for the linguistic form, but baby, you look good. You look straight, baby. Hey. Then he goes home and tells his wife, oh, man, I saw, uh, I saw homeboy today. Boy, he looked, man, I'm telling you, he looked fine. Man, you should have seen what he had on. He, they was fitting him like a kid glove. See, that's how men talk. See, women, although, see, when they're fat, they wore the same kind of tight clothes. She had on that old tight dress. See, she, that wasn't right for her to wear that. See, that's how women would talk. Don't play with me. You're jealous because she has some form of voluptuousness. She has a figure now. See, that's how women talk. That's how women talk. Men say, boy, he look right. And make him cut back on that, uh, on the french fries and potato chips and hamburger and hot dog tonight. He may do it one or two nights, but he going back. You understand? It is just the truth. Women hate. They hate. They hate. The hatred is hard. It's callous. It's like men hate. Women hate. They're nasty and cold with each other. I don't care how men disagree, they won't intrigue each other like that. That's just a fact. I may not like you, you may not like me, but it's still there's a great kosher type of environment. That's the way women, they're cold and they're vicious. That's why you almost become daughters of Desire. You must become the bad. Bathe yourself. He was there in the two ways. Hear this, Yisrael. He says, where the two ways, Yeskel 21, 21, at the head of the two ways, at the head of the rivers. It is one thing that when a flow of water flows into the head, a stream, and then it parts. And one river flows this way, and one river flows that way, the stream. We may call them creeks, but that creek flows that way, and the other creek flows the other way. It says, and this is where the king shall stand. This shall be his strength. It shall be divination or kesem, witchcraft. Nimrod's name mean, or Nimrod means rebellion. It means rebellion. That's what it means. And not only that, he made an arrow that is kala, that is bright. He brought the curse by divination. He made something that is so attractive uh, that we are lured to it. We want it, sir. That's the nature of Nimrod. That is Babel. That's what flows out of a river. It makes it bright. Color, it's a curse though. Everything the world gives us, we touch it, curse us. Curse our dedication to you, our faithfulness, our, our love for each other. That's where he stood, but he used the power of Kesem, of divination, of witchcraft. And he made the arrow to be cursed. And it says that he consulted with teraphim. He consulted with the spirit of idolatry and witchcraft. That's why Nimrod became a great man. He became a mighty one. They began to exalt him. Why? Because he had consulted his mama. Had consulted with the spirits of the teraphim. With the demonic powers of idolatry and witchcraft that was sown into the midst of him. Tell me what nation is not consumed with kesem, with witchcraft and divination. Tell me what. Tell me what. Tell me one that is not. From Jamaica to Haiti, from Haiti to ba ba Basquata, from Basquata to Congos, from the Congos to Libya, from Libya to Moscow, 
from Moscow to Mongolia, from Mongolia down to the China Sea, from the China Sea to the Philippines, uh, to Vietnam, uh, to Australia, New Zealand, to the Horn of North America, Canada, down to the goats and the gates of America. Everything in every nation there too. Two opinion, two people, conservative and, and liberals. If you're in the way of any of those ways, you're going to hell. You walk by the disciplines of any of those ways, you're going to hell. Hallelujah. He says, and they consorted with the teraphim, the idols and the idolatry, families of idolatry. Our Zakhain taught us how Abraham... And Tira, his father, that he went out and broke down his, one of his gods and say, uh, uh, say, 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 look what happened. He said, oh, boy, you must remind God. See, it is a God's uh, type spirit, his father. Although out of that, uh, out, of, uh, out of him came Abraham, the father of all the nations, uh, of the nation of Israel, out of him. And when you began to consult with these teraphim and the idolatry and idolatrous things, uh, did you draw on the strength of those things uh, that, that did not come by ya? Uh, it came by rebellionists, and you draw from that nurturing. Uh, you, you, you do things that whereby you have learned the way of those things uh, by rebellionists. Uh, you have not learned them by the ways of Torah. The Torah has not been reliable unto you. Uh, you have learned them by rebellionists. Uh, you were caught in the way, the head of the two rivers, uh, and this great king, uh, Nimrod of Babel, uh, he used the spirit of divination, Kesem, uh, to cause the people to bow down. There was one by the name of Simeon, that he was perceived as a great man among all the people. Rich, poor, they all honored him as a great man. Zalas and Shaul, they began to teach the power of this truth and show them the power of what Torah says. That's why the enemy keeps us away. That's the spirit of, it's Kesem, it's witchcraft. That's why we don't love Torah. We don't like to study Torah. There are very few that take time for Torah. We'll go home and read a little bit. We'll break it out so everybody can see us reading. But we don't study. We must study to show ourselves approved. I show anybody how to study. It's not a process that is easy. It's going to take some, some, some great perseverance and tenacity and a willingness. It doesn't take nothing to read a novel. No more than it takes to read the book. The difference between what a student study for a test is study, doesn't it? That's how you got to study this book. You have been in college or high school, you know what I'm talking about. You study. You study. You got to lay awake at night to make sure you, you, you study? Come on. You got to remember, you got you to gotta memorize that stuff. Yes. You may forget a lot after the test, but you remember it enough to take the test and pass. Yeah. Hallelujah. I love him because he first loved me and he purchased my nephesh on the tree at Calvary. Oh, I love Yama Abba. I love him because he first loved me. A wretched sinner man. Corrupting all of my ways. Oh, the dam of Yeshua. Wash and cleanse me. Oh, my love. Barak Yama Abba. Hallelujah. I don't know how to say I love him. I want to be taught the mystery of the commands of Yah and to obey Him. I thought today, my uh, I saw where this basketball player, 69, he was dead. I say, wow, that gives me 10 years if I go at 69. Getting closer to it. So, what I must do, I must do it now. As folks say, tomorrow is not promised. Not a lot of years, 10 more years. 69. We better get real. Bobel. And the king of Babel, 21 21, he started at the parting ways, at the head of the two ways, the two rivers. Rivers already represent the mass of people, and that is the nature of Bobel, the people of the world, the great rivers uh, and the great constitutions, what they call great constitutions. 
It is a selfish mentality. I don't care where you go. It is me and myself. I don't care where you go in the world. That's how people think today. And he used the spirit of divination. He consulted with idols and demons and images. And he looked into the liver or the chabit. He looked into those things that were just difficult to understand, to perceive and to conceptualize what they mean. And so people say, well, you know the way of Yah is so hard. No, because you're a transgressor. Because you transgress Torah, that's why it's hard. You love sin. That's why you love that. It says, and at his right hand, listen now, one river at the right hand was divination, Kesem, for Yerushalayim. This is what he command the prophet to appoint. Because of our rebelliousness and our sins and our ways that are so wicked and full of rebelliousness, at the right hand he appointed divination to appoint a captain to open the mouth of the slaughter. That's what he said. To lift up the voices with a shout. To appoint battering rams against the gate. To cast a mount to a build a fort. And he says, and it shall be to them as a false divination. A divination. That's what it shall be. It shall be a kasan in their sight. To them that has sworn oath. But he shall call to remembrance, see, the iniquity, the ovan, the rebellionness that has brought about this witchcraft. It is Nimrod, his name means uh, rebellion. It is Bobel that means to mix the mixture. We want to mix truth with our own flesh. We mix it with our own corruption, our lies. We're mean as a damn, uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a wicked cat. That's the nature of his people. We're mean and hard and evil. And it opens up the door to every kind. That's what the, a divination does. Uh, divination is open up every door to every unclean thing. Uh, and it calls that ovon, that ovin, that perverse nature to flow. And that's all that flow out of Babel, uh, of Bobel, Babylon, uh, Bovel. That's all that flows out. And we don't understand the secrets of that. We don't understand how it begins and how the origination of that. Uh, and what is the process to impede it. Uh, and how we must have Men of understanding and wise, not some silly jackass men uh, that want to pretend they're wise uh, and their verbiage doesn't express the wisdom uh, of the very fruit of their own hearts. The man is wise, his words. Men gravitate. They're quiet. You don't have to be a clown, man. I've laughed enough that if I never laugh again in my life, I don't have to laugh. I'm not a laugher. I don't laugh much. I used to watch the men in my days. Uh, older men, they did. You know, they would laugh, but it was the serious laugh. And I was quiet. And I watch. I observed men. I was a watcher of men. I would watch them. I watched the older cats. Can I say this? My natural sister called me about. It was about a month ago. And she says to me, she says, you remember Swain and Wayne? I said, sure, I was a young kid. She says, he's that old. I said, no, he's not. Is he that old? Wow. I thought he was about your age. She said, oh, no, 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 no. So he always asks about you. And she said this that I have never said to my natural sister. He said this quote, they will call me Bean, Bean Hair. That's what they call me because I used to wear my hair shave all the time because my mother, she put them scissors on there. You look the mess with, with all them different type, you know. She didn't have no clippers. So mama put them scissors on there. You had them curled, you had the curls there, but they weren't curls. You had that hair part in ways, you had a nice patch here, they all low, and this, she, she messed me up. But that's all mama could do. She couldn't afford to send me to the barbershop. 50 cents was a lot of money in the 60s, you know. So mama would cut that hair and I would look a mess. And what my brother that's deceased, what he would do, he would say, sit down, boy. He would take a razor and lather my hair and he would shave it all off. And so they said you had a hair like a bean. You know how kids are, bean, bean head, bean, 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 bean. So that name stuck, bean. They call me bean, bean head, bean. 
because I wore my hair always cut because until I got where I could get me a haircut, cats didn't have clippers like they have today and they set up a barber shop out on the lawn. They didn't have that in those days. And so until I got able to pay for my own haircuts, I had to wear a bean head. They call me Bean. So that name's stuck with me. So he says to her, he says, you know what, we like Bean. We like David. And they did like me. And this is what he said to her. He said, we always did him right. We were always fair by him. And they were, they were corrupt. But they were always straight by me. They didn't try to beat me. They didn't play my youth and my ignorance. They were always straight by me. Always. If they made $1,000, they gave me 350 and they got each one of them. They didn't have to tell me. They come out of place, we got, we got $1,500. I got exactly what each of them got. And I didn't, they wouldn't even let me do things that would get me in trouble. Come on, we like you, man. And they was all hustles, hustlers. And they would sit down and they would talk. And the conversation would reminisce. Cross their legs. Sit. Bishop stopped me from crossing my leg. Y'all ain't got to cross your leg. And the men, would, they would just sit down. You know, just... That's how they would sit. Yeah, you know, uh, I was listening to Malcolm X and he made a statement. Huey P. You know, Huey P. Newton, man. He was he was rolling the other day, man. Yeah, that's how they would do it. Get me some water, man. They would sit like that. That's what they did. It's just the truth. He said we did him right, and I knew that he could only tell my natural. I say they did. They were always straight by me. They were fair. He says you just go down there and watch for it. You hear something just go, <whistles> you just whistle, and you just go on. Don't worry about us. Oh, they corrupt me because I was corrupt. But that's how they did me. And those cats, I spent a lot of time in prison. One is still in prison, Wayne. He says he wants to see us. I said, Tim, go to the website. I'm not the little David now I used to be now. I'm a man. You can't come talking that talk like that. Not in this hour. Yeah. For the parting of the two ways for the spirit of divination and rebellionness. We use the spirit of kesem, kasam, witchcraft, because we rebel. We rebel against order, establishment, and the ways of Yah. We rebel against when we, Yah commands us to submit us one or another. He means what he says. In the fear of Yah. So we rebel against those things. Let, let me move on quickly here. He says in verse 22 on the right hand, we see that Kesem divination. And then he says in verse 23, and to them, uh, he says, and it shall be to them like a false divination. They're going to think that they got tremendous promising reward. But it's false. It's false. It's false. It's going to allure you. There is a composition of divination and the strength. What is it? That's why Nimrod could strengthen that in Shinar and the rivers that flowed out of Shinar. The streams are at the way at the head of the rivers. Uh, it brought forth these spirits. Uh, here's something so profound in 1 Shemuya. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 13. This is what holds the power over us. That's why we operate in witchcraft. Uh, that's why we operate in the very nature of Babel. Uh, it is a mystery. We don't understand uh, that there is a power that has, uh, that has uh, its origins in the heavens that they were once in heaven. Uh, and yet not all the secrets and the mysteries will open unto them. Uh, so they have come down and integrated themselves among women uh, and produced sons and daughters uh, that produce sons and daughters uh, whereby their hearts have been nurtured by the power of divination. Uh, that's why they hate the name of Yah Yahweh. That's why they hate Yahshua. But they love their damn Jesus and their lords uh, and their gods. Uh, Listen to this in 1 Samuel chapter 15. The man thought he did right, but he did wrong. He was a king. He departed out of the way of Yah. And the prophet came to him. He said, this is the power that has held you. 1 Samuel 15, 23. He says, for the Mary or the rebellionists, 
It's because you're bitter. You know you're rebellious when you're bitter and you're stiff-necked. You know you're rebellious when you're contentious. When you have this contentious mindset, he says, for rebellion is as the sin of Kesem, of witchcraft. And see, because he was stubborn, that's why he caused the people to worship him. He said, and stubbornness of Pasa, you are arrogant. You presume that you have something. Uh, it is as iniquity. There is nothing uh, more powerful than divination, divination, uh, and of own iniquity. These are the parting ways. These are the parting ways. These are the parting ways. Iniquity. And divination. He says, and stubbornness, we don't think we're stubborn, is as iniquity of own. That you have an idol, specifically Ovin, it is idolatry. He says, is as, is as iniquity. And then he uses the words, uh, and uh, the teraphim, the family of idols, or it is as idolatry. He says, why? Because you have ma'as, you have rejected the word of Yah. Yah has rejected you from being the king of Yisra'ya. Because you have rejected the word of Yah, because you have discounted it, Yah has rejected you. As I read in Hanak, I use that word Ovin, when it talks about the punishment of those, that when Yah shall bring his just judgment upon all of them, or Yisra'ya, because of the sins and because of our corruption, he's going to bring that upon us. And again, I use the word Ma'as, it was there found in Hanak 16 and verse, uh, verse 3. It says this, does it say that in, uh, in hold that in 1 Samuel 15, 23. Because you have rejected, because you have despised, it is in our forefather's tongue Ma'as. That's what it says. 1 Samuel 15, verse 23. Ma'as. That it says here in Hanak 16, 3. He said, you were once in the heavens. But not all the mysteries of heavens were open to you. And you only knew the rejected, the ma'as. You only knew the rejected mysteries. Hanak 16, 3. He was talking to the Melachim. And he said, because you have the spirit of witchcraft. Because you have the spirit of Ovon, he says you have rejected the word of Yah, and Yah has rejected you from being Melach. When you reject the counsel of Yah, he rejects your beauty. He rejects you from being a man, uh, an instructor of his people. He rejects you. I will, my friend. I will. He said, I, that knowledge, what you have is rejected knowledge. It is knowledge that has no power. It has no relevance today. It, well, that, that, those mysteries are revealed. Uh, they're revealed unto men of understanding and great wisdom. Uh, they have the composure. They have the posure. They have the beauty. They have the strength. You're captivated by their presence. We are a nation. We are royal people. Men should be captivated by us. We can't walk down the street acting like some kind of jitterbug, some kind of fool, some kind of jackass of a clown. We can't do that. Everything we do has to be right. I remember as a young man, you know, I remember as a young man, we all in our days, we would wink our eyes and all that. And I remember when Evander Hartsfield put it out to me, he said, don't act like a damn fool. He didn't use the word damn, because a fool, he winked his eye up. See, when you do that, that's, it's wrong. I don't care when you do it. The things you don't do, man. I said, you don't do woman. That's the seed of the man's heart when he does that. I don't care who you are. You might as well love me, don't you? love me for one moment. And if I tell you the truth, you get upset with me. Your whole heart changes against me. That's sad. You reject. See, when y'all corrects us, we get mad. We're wrong. Just say, help me, y'all, not to do that. That's what you say, man. You don't, you don't change your countenance. Stop it. That's a weakness of a man. I hate that. I hate that about me. I hate that about us. I hate our cowardice. We don't want you to correct us. When that man would rebuke me, I was a young, strong man. I was fit as a fiddle. Again, I run 15, 20 miles. That was my thing. 
I'll get down, mama, hold my legs. I do 500, 700 sit-ups at a time. Then. I hold your leg, you do three or 400. That's how fit I was. A fun night with me was getting out running 20 miles. I'll be back. I just run. Playing basketball all day. Working out. And I was fit and strong. And he would correct me. He said, because you're not like the rest of them. That's what he wanted. Yeah. You're not like them. Yeah. You're not like them. I've traveled the United States. He was at a church of God in Christ. I met men twice your age. They don't have, you're 25 year old man. I met men 50 double your age. They don't have what you have, son. These other men don't come to your shoelaces. I said, yet. And I never allowed that to swell my head. Come on, how can I do that with this little crowd today? Few listening. And my response to him, I would never try to rebuke him. I would say, Evangelist Hartsfield, but these men, they have their gift from Yah. So it's all important. He says, say what you want to, son. <laughs> I know. They don't have what you have. You're not going to talk like them. You're going to act like them. He'll let them talk any kind of way. He will not let me talk any kind of way. They could get up and talk and preach any kind of way. If I said something wrong, I remember the first time I used the words, Chadosh. It's a set apart, the, 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 the very uh, nature of Yah. It is his, I remember you know, he said, brother, of course I had that old strong concordia, as you can see, he would give you the Hebraic words. And, and I would, you know, I want to kind of present myself in a way that because I was always kind of intimidated when I would get up there when I'm preaching. I'm glad I was that way because I honored him. And I would show him the great honor. And I, and I would stick to the thing that was precisely what I was able to handle and understand. I did not try to open up no great mysteries or nothing. I handled those simple things. That's all right, brother. <laughs> and he would get up and polish up that message when I finish. Sure he would. And I would learn from him when I see polish it up. Oh, that. that's easy for a man to sit down and then get up behind you and then polish it up. That, that's not hard. It's tough for the man who gets up and starts. Come on. I'm going to close in a minute. Hear this, Yisraya. Hear this. We must deal with the mystery and understand the words. Amuch. We must understand that what a mystery is. And then this is what <clears throat> Shaul says in 1 Samuel 15, 24. And Shaul said to Shemulia, I have sinned. For I have transgressed, he says, the feth, the commandment, the mouth of Yah, the word of Yah. He says, not only have I transgressed the words of Yah, does he say, I've transgressed your words, Shemul, I mean, uh, Samulia, Shemulia, does he say that? He said, not only have I defied Yah, I've defied your word, because I feared the people, and I obeyed their voice. That's what he said. It's one thing that the Torah of Yah, the sound of this great sound of truth, it has reverberated throughout the world. Why? Because that is where the spirit of Babel and the spirit of Nimrod, this rebellious spirit, it is, it is the trans, it is the, it is the commitment of the women unto those angels, the teraphim, where they had a relationship and they produced babies. And there were giants that were strong, mighty men in the earth at that time. And those mothers, that's why they said to you, talk to your baby, make your baby smart. And everybody went nutty with that. Talking to their baby, so I'm going to sing to the baby. And play some music. Put it up on your belly. Let baby hear that. Read to the baby. Everybody, from the poorest to the richest. And that's what these mothers spoke into the babies. That's why mothers, if you're mean as hell, you're going to make your baby that way. If you're a nasty woman, your babies are going to be nasty. If you're a nutty damn woman, your babies are going to be nutty too now. You're the chamber. You're the birthplace. You are the inspiration in your heart. It is your heart that feeds them. That's why you better repent before you try to do anything else. You need to get your heart right. Come on. And that's why our sons are not strong at all today. They don't know how to love women because, Mama, you ain't know how. You don't know and you never knew how to love any damn thing. I will preach. There are mothers that love their children, their sons and their daughters. Come on, they had a great inspiration given unto them. I want to close here because I want you to understand, Yisra Yahuda, that this... Is what Torah says. Yoshua said to them, Now I read to us what Yeshua said there 
the way that the, the way when they part the two ways. Now look what Yahshua said. That it, Hashatan shows that there's a unified nature of his kingdom. There's a unified nature of his kingdom. This is what Yahshua says in Marcus, Lucas, Luke 11, 4. When he commanded the, his Tamadims, um, and he told them to go into a place because he had to make a triumphant entrance into Yerushalayim. He said, and they went their way, Mark eleven four, and they went their way and they found the coat tied by the door. Without in a place where the two ways met. Where the two ways met. At the head of the two ways. And the only way we're going to overcome the power of divination of the spirit of Shinha, we must meet the king at the way where he stands. Where he administers the Torah of Yah and the great power of living Torah in him. So he found the coats. He found that beast. Whereby the two ways not. And they journey the roads. There's only one way. There's only one Imona. There's only one Emerson. There's only one way. We must have those that take time to understand. And search out each scripture. This is our assurance. Hallelujah. For what? Shaustas and Romeo. Romans 8 and 10. Babel, the spirit went into all the earth. That's where the spirit is. That's why this had to happen right here in Romans 10 and 18. But I say, have they not heard? Have the people not known of the power of Yeshua and the nature of Babel? He says, yes, it is a certain thing. Verily, they are sound, the sound of the Talmudim, the sound of the Shulishiach. Or the Shulishim, the prophets, the apostles. It went into all the earth. It went into all the earth. It went into all the Olam of the Eric, all the earth. And their words to the end of the world. That was the reason why. It had to go into all the earth. Because of Babel. Because of the rebellionness, the iniquity, the, 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 the power of Kassam. Witchcraft and iniquity. The man transgressed the Torah, that's iniquity. And that's what Nimrod did. He transgressed the law of man. When he became a mighty one that he even went before Yah and said, look at me now. And so he said, I will visit you. And so he built the tower of Babel. Every kind of mixture of divination and demonic power. Every kind of lawlessness. What they perceive, what they imagine. Can you imagine the engineering construct of that? If a man fell to his death, they didn't even move. But if a brick fell, they cried. Took you two days to walk around the city or walk around the structure in Shunach. Again, too. And even how short time is not disunified. You let people say what you want to, but they're not disunified. Show me the street gangs. They're unified. They got their captains, their lieutenants, and they will blast you to hell, will they not? That's a fact. Hallelujah. I want to close with two last verses. In Shirak, write it down, 21.3. Shirak 21.3. It says, all iniquity, all ovon, ovim, all rebelliousness, all witchcraft, all iniquity. And that's what comes out of Babel. It is a mixture of self-righteousness and the spirit of the teraphim, and the spirit of you being great and a God. All iniquity is like a two-edged sword. And the wounds that it brings, they cannot be healed. That's why we are mean. We can't be healed because of our iniquity. That's what comes out of the river of Shana, out of the two ways. We can't be healed. And the wounds of our own iniquity, we are cold and we can't be healed of it. The wounds are on. There is no more pay. The wounds can't be restored. All iniquity, all iniquity is like a two-edged sword. Like a two-edged sword. All of it, not some of it, but all of it is like a two-edged sword. Hallelujah. It is. And I close with this. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we as a nation of Almighty Yah, we must understand this as I read in Yes scale. The two spirits of Shana, the two Rivers of Shina, as Yeskel said, here again, in Yeskel 21:21, 21, 21, for the 
king of Babel, he stood at the parting way and the head of the two ways where the rivers sprung forth. Where did it come out of? Sina, Shina. That's where the river flows out of Babel and used divination. And his arrow was bright and he used kala, witchcraft, or the curse that our minds do not gravitate to Yah. That our minds don't love Torah. That's why I began in Shirak that tells us uh, that a man's understanding, his wisdom, his tabun. When he began to understand, he knows that the, the Torah is as dependable, more dependable than anything you see on YouTube. Anything you hear or read from some book that some corrupt man has written. I'm going to stop there. May God's riches rest upon your own nation. May the simplicity, you're not going to hear it any simple than that. Hallelujah. I don't show you what I know. I show you what the book says. Hallelujah. I show you what the book says. And we have to love the messengers of Yah. This doesn't come by sitting around all night playing bango plan puzzles this come by the labor of Torah the early hours in the morning you're waking up see when you're always in bed this morning I was up and doing some study that's a fact may he strengthen you all you that have joined us make a copy give it to someone we greet you my Octayonia down there in Memphis bless you my friend and Brother White there, you and your wife there in Arizona, and all of our friends, uh, uh, Zakane uh, Davis, and you that in the house of Yahweh there in Los Angeles, California, all of our friends, all of you. I hope Mariana, we greet you in your Yeshua's name. Ak Kessler, you and your wife, may Yah's riches rest upon you all in your Yeshua's mighty name. Uh, Ak Felix, Felix there in, in, uh, in Oklahoma, and I hope. Black men there in New Jersey. Come on, sister. We'll take care of you. We'll feed you well, all right? Take care of you when you come. So we greet you all. There's so many of the folks that have come. around. not so many. Those that have come. I've heard them. You and my pastors. I've never said that when they say that. Where are they today? Oh, he's my pastor. Oh, shut up, heifer. One came here from New Jersey. Oh, I just love you so. You're my pastor. Where is she today? Because this man, she didn't find someone that's going to play with her. You look for someone to lift you up and say, oh, look at this beautiful. No, she wasn't beautiful. She need work on her wicked arse. And because I didn't lift her up and promote her, then all of a sudden, he's not, the, he's not what I thought he was. I'm glad I'm not what you thought I was. I don't want to be what you think I am. Oh, I'm spiritual. You're not spiritual. You got an Isabel spirit. That's just a fact. Because a true woman, she will submit. She knows that a, a true man, he's not trying to take advantage of her in some kind of sensual way. Why would I want to do that? I'm old now. Tell me. Never done it all my life. Why would I do it now? It's stupid. It doesn't make sense to me. And so they come with all of the accolades. They love me. They this. Oh, you're my pastor. What you say? That's why I don't say nothing to people like that. I don't tell them nothing. Because I know the change is going to come after a while. I was born by the river in a little shack, a little tent. Oh, I've been searching ever since. It's been a long, long, long what? Time. You should know that. How would you know that? Got my mind made up in your shoes. My, ah. Hallelujah. Those were the songs of the 60s. You get up on Saturday morning, you will hear them. It was a conscience song. Man, just sit down and listen. That's what it was. Curtis Mayfield. You are the people that are blacker than blue. P. 
people didn't understand that. As a young boy, I love the 60s. Yeah. Things were not complicated. Oh, yeah. It was so easy. Yeah. And Paul Robeson says, summertime when the living is easy. It was so easy. I love the 60s. Sometimes when I'm riding down the road, come and say, ah, oh, mama, what it feels like? It feels like the autumn of the year and school is back in and we're walking to school. And Chicken go goes, you're going up there to get your. You didn't go get a bologna, you went and got your bologna meat. Not bologna, bologna meat. Not sandwich. My brother said, Give me a bologna meat sandwich. He didn't want a sandwich, he wanted a sandwich. He had got paid that week, he was dressed up, and he went. I never forget, we were in chicken go goes. He says to the woman, he thought he was fly, then and ball eager. He says, I want a bologna meat sandwich. I like that. Never forgotten. I'm talking about mad. I was young. I said, boy, if you, if you believe what you got something fly, you shouldn't say sandwich. Give me a sandwich. Give me a bologna. It is meat, isn't it? This is what they call it. Bologna. Give me a bologna meat sandwich. Go to Chicken Go Goes with $2. You get a fish sandwich. You get your bologna meat sandwich. You get you a hot dog. You get you some french fries. You get you some hamburger. You get all that. And that was a Friday's meal. You had $2. You stop by the store there, Pete Munch. You go to the bubble gum machine, put three pennies in there. You got you some bubble gum. May get you a lucky ball. That's a nickel. You get your 10 cent worth of those old big old mm, oatmeal cookies, you got 10. You get 10 cents worth of two for a penny, you got 20. That's a Friday's meal, you understand? You ride your bicycle. They don't have to worry about nobody raping you. In the wee hours, you're riding your bicycle. Everybody go, where you going? We knew at 6, 6, 30, you're going to chicken go-go's. Everybody going, chicken go-go's. Everybody. Then you got enough change to get you a butternut and uh, some barrels uh, and a payday. Uh, and you still got a few pennies to boot. You appreciated a nickel or dime back then because it had, you could buy something. And you still had something to boot. Uh, you got home, you're going to eat it all. You go through the fish sandwich. You know, fella, I was. My eyes were bigger than my belly, but mama, I would stay up all night until I ate it all. You went to the hot dog and you got chili and all of that on the hot dog. 20 cents. You're going to save the hamburger for last. Then you go through the fish sandwich. You see, you got all the butternut and the payday. You got to eat some of that. Can't eat it all. You bite off the hot dog. You wake up in the morning and the bread is hard because it's. That was easy living. Two dollars was something. May I brought you all you that are listening sit an offering to help. You sit there and you eat. Send some money to help. It costs money. I said it like that. You won't tithe. You won't get send some money. Yeah, brought you all. Come on, Sake. Miss Richards, rest upon your own shoes thing. Ooh, it's hot in here. Hell is hot, eh? <laughs> Hell is on it. Yeah, right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Again, we do greet you all, our visitors, familiar faces, all of the same Ruach that are listening by via of live stream, or those of you that are listening by our small radio station, FM station here at Jefferson, South Carolina. You know, it's important that we as a people, Israel, the only way we're going to become strong and stronger in Yahshua Hamashiach, is that we continue to hear, where we shema, and that's more than just a message like this, we hear it, we, we rejoice in it, it goes in one ear, ear and out the other, but that we apply it, Yisraya. That even as Re'ah Yisraya expressed to us by the Ruach HaKodesh, that we do all things, Yisraya, not by the flesh, not by our own way, 
But by that way, the direction, the path that Yah has established, even from the very sheath of all things, Israel, Yah. There will be a people that is pleasing to his sight, Israel, Yah. That when he looks upon us, he sees the wealth of his, the beauty that he has installed in us, that it produces and continues to produce seed and much fruit. That's what he desires, Israel, Yah, for us to produce much fruit. Even in this time, in our situation, in this era, today, Right now, not tomorrow, but right now, Yisrael, hallelujah. It's a beautiful day. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice in Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. And we give him, we will rock him for all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Let us shub, let us turn. And we do that because we know that we're in this world, we're in this Olam. But yet we are not restricted because of Yahshua HaMashiach, what he has done for all Yisrael. Hallelujah. So let us shoot, let us turn. Almighty, Almighty Yahweh, we do barak you for this another day. You have given us, you have given us life this day. And as I say so many times, you've given us a new day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this day we will never see again. So while today is today, Abba Yahweh, we do barak you. And we give you toda. And we lift up your mighty name, Abba Yahweh. For of the great and the richest of the Shemayims that you do pour out upon Yisrael. We do ask, Abba Yahweh, those that have come near and afar today, those that are listening, you return them home, Abba Yahweh, safely, and that your ruach and that your, your word, Abba Yahweh, be a continual hedge around Kol Yisrael. We do barak you, and we simply give you toda, Abba Yahweh. We know that it's not by the means of possessions which we possess, which is very small, Abba Yahweh, but it's by your ruach, HaKodesh, that you have placed in every, each and every one of us today. We do give you toda. In the precious and mighty name of Yahshua, HaMashiach, we do declare, Hallelujah! 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 Shabbat Shalom, Ko Yisrael, Shalom, Hallelujah.